thousands of years ago, before the dawn of man as we knew him. A primitive ape-like creature observes that the fingers on its hand are a group of individual objects which can be easily counted, inventing the concept of numbers, thus dooming the human species to a relentless death march of quantifying the world around them. From that point we have learned that everything can be measured with numbers, and role-playing games are the pinnacle of this practice. Since their inception, RPGs have been about bringing a made-up facsimile of yourself to life and having them live inside an entire world made up of numbers. Numbers measure everything from your skill with a weapon, to the complexity of a locking mechanism, to how far you can sprint, to how many times you can hear that one guy quote critical role before you're forced to cave his skull in with a piece of bent rebar. Each and every important element is quantified so that it can affect the outcome of your actions facilitated by the chaotic roll of the dice. Everything from the humble D6, to the ubiquitous D20, to the giant novelty D20, to whatever the hell this thing is. Dice are the computers that calculate the outcome of every meaningful interaction in your matrix-like reality. And there are a lot of different systems to count numbers using dice. Some use a bunch of different dice, some only use one dice. Some use a bunch of a single kind of dice, some use a whole bunch of different types of dice. Some use dice that don't even have numbers on them, and some don't even use dice at all. Now at some point you've probably asked yourself, what's the best dice system to use? Well first off, don't you ever ask these questions, you will start a gigantic drama. In all my years of roleplaying I have seen this argument come up a lot, and there are two major camps in this debate. First are the objectivists. STEM field employed science and math majors who observe numbers for what they are. An objective, definitive, factual measurement of a concept or object, rooted entirely in reality, whose meaning cannot be changed or transmuted based on feeling, emotion, or subjective input. And on the other side, you have people who like to have fun when they roleplay. Let's observe the objectivist philosophy. All dice rolls, and indeed any element of randomness in an action, are meant to represent one thing, a percent chance of success. And this is true, all randomness in RPGs is about determining a binary success or failure state. You attack the monster, you either hit the monster and deal damage, or you miss and waste your action. You roll athletics to climb a cliff, you either succeed and climb the cliff, or fail and fall. No matter how many variables you want to take into account, they can only do one of two things, negatively or positively affect the likelihood of success. And the thing about math is that numbers can be condensed. The fewer variables, the easier the equation is to calculate and understand. A D100 percentage system has two numbers, the percent chance of success, which is a condensing of all the variables relating to the outcome into their logical end state, and the value generated by the dice roll. Compare the value generated to the target number, and if it is equal to or lower, your action succeeds. This is the simplest, most objective way to determine success while still maintaining an element of chance, and it is for this reason that the D100 is the best dice system for your roleplaying games. The greatest strength of the objectivist argument is also its greatest weakness. While they are technically correct, the best kind of correct, they predictably fail to consider how people feel about the numbers. If you have a 55% chance of success on a task, that's pretty good, it means that over half the time you'll pass, but all you're going to see is that almost half the time you're going to fail. Anything less than 85% just doesn't feel reliable. And if you can't do something reliably, then it feels disheartening, it makes you wonder why you're even playing the game. And the worst part is, most people are perfectly content with a low percent chance, as long as they can't see it. Let's take a look at 5th edition. Goblins are a super common monster, so easy you're supposed to kill them by the dozens. Basic goblins have an armor class of 15. You mostly fight these creatures from levels 1 to 4. Now any good D&D character starts with a high value in their primary stat. Let's be generous and say they have an 18, giving you a plus 4 modifier. You attack with proficiency, that's an additional plus 2. That's a plus 6 bonus, that's pretty good. Now you attack the goblin. Including all your bonuses, you only need to roll a 9 or higher to hit the goblin. That sounds pretty good, right? Well, it shouldn't, because that's only 60%. If this was a math test, you just flunked. If you looked at your character sheet when you went to make an attack, and all you saw was 60%, you wouldn't feel very confident. But that's not what you see. What you see is plus 6. This is how people lose their houses gambling. The devil magic of elaborate equations allows the true likelihood of something to be obscured, inspiring confidence when there shouldn't be any. The human primate brain likes big numbers, and likes adding numbers together, and most importantly, likes counting up. For my next example, I'll invite you to come back in time, where your only interaction with D&D was likely being curled up in your dad's balls while he was playing D&D. In the early days, D&D used a system to hit targets in combat called Thacko, or to hit armor class 0. In this system, your likelihood of succeeding on any attack you could make against any monster in combat was determined by a single value found by consulting this chart. You only had to roll equal to or higher than the value to succeed. 
The only modifier to this roll was a single negative modifier provided by the monster's armor class, which was not a target number at this time, but a penalty to your ability to hit the creature composed of all its defenses put together. Now when people ask me what system to get into to start with, I usually tell them D&D because of how few numbers you need to keep track of. And once when I said this, I had some galaxy level intellect intrude on the conversation to explain that the game was simpler when it used Thacko for that exact reason. And you want to know what? He was right. The modern system needs at least four numbers, the die roll, your attribute, your proficiency, and the target's armor class. Whereas Thacko only needs three, the target number, the enemy AC, and the dice roll. But the problem was, and still is, that nobody likes Thacko. Because no one likes having a low number represent their capability, and nobody likes testing against themselves. Big numbers will always mean a more satisfying feeling, and this is evident in dice pool systems. Dice pools dress up statistics very well, because you have to do a lot of advanced statistical math to figure out the likelihood of success. Dice pools provide a very tactical benefit to the game, in that for every point you have, you get to hold an extra dice. One of my players even said that they can feel their character's power just by picking up the dice pool and rolling it. There are definitely easier ways to count success, but it is more satisfying. In fact, Genesis, which might be one of my favorite systems of all time, has what might be one of the most elaborate and needlessly complicated dice mechanics, whose numbers are finagled in such a way that they are very specific about your likelihood of success, but are so dressed up as to make it virtually impossible for you to untangle them on the spot. So you just switch your brain off and roll the brightly colored plastic dice, which gives you that ever necessary hit of dopamine. And that's what it comes down to. Numbers and statistics and raw values don't mean anything to most players, because thinking about them takes you out of the game. If you bothered to think about your chances of success, you'd stop being a high-flying fantasy hero, and you'd come crashing back down to reality, where you're just a person, in a room, playing a game. As a wise man once said, human beings will always prefer a comforting lie to an unpleasant truth. Buddha. Or maybe that was Biggie.